Uh, you know, we were talking earlier about sustainability. We were talking very briefly, and you had a really amazing fact that you dropped a, like a bomb right here. And I was like, oh my gosh, we need to talk about this. So would you just, I mean, it sounds like it's something that you're really passionate about. I would just like to know kind of what's on your mind about all that. Yeah, well, um, you know, sustainability uh, sustainability is really important, if, if not, like, I think the most important um, area of innovation within the event space. Um, and it's important because events are the second most wasteful industry on the planet after construction. Um, I have no idea. Events takes it. Yeah, if you, I mean, if you sort of, like, reason it out and you think like okay well then you, when you add like sporting events and all these you know concerts and stuff you're building all this stuff and like throwing it out and then you know, as an event professional we know how much like plastic and like crap is is out there um so so yeah so i think that for me once i found out that piece of information it was really important for me to just take a look at the entire uh entire supply chain entire process and think about how can we reduce waste and and get ourselves off of this horrible list of offenders you know to to the environment to the planet so how do we do it i mean like obviously you're a thinker i can tell that how how do you do something like that, or how do you at least move you from number two to number three? Or it's like how do we make events less wasteful? It's so crazy how like very small things can make a huge impact. Like um, like for instance, actually like just taking meat off of your menu or even reducing it by half or forty percent can save millions of gallons of water on a hundred person event. Seriously, meat? You said yep. Yep, beef in, in particular is. Beef, yeah, because for every ounce of beef, it takes like how many gallons of water to produce that? Oh, wow, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredible. And you said just for 100 person. Okay, so yep. maybe lighten the amount of meat. And people are becoming more and more accept, uh, and they accept that more now. Tell me more about like what other ideas do you have? Yeah, um, actually, like thinking about um, actually creating opportunities for people to dial into a well, dial and that's like so old school but like <laughs> uh, creating opportunities for people to um to jump in on a live stream instead of jumping on a plane to get to to get to an event i mean obviously um you know an in-person interaction is has its own special like brand of magic but you know actually live stream allows people to hear information and it creates more accessibility um, around the world and, and that giving that education out there and it also reduces like carbon footprint which is huge well exactly. it's funny you say that so we just had a podcast with ashley crowder and she i love ashley oh she's a angelina like me she's yeah she's unbelievable but she she was talking all about how it's becoming way more the norm to vr someone in or hologram hologram someone in yeah her, her technology is holographic it's so cool but like it's becoming more and more acceptable to do and like you said you know you're able to send it out uh from anywhere in the world and really participate as uh someone's something's on fire downstairs well, it's or funny something. we can hear it <laughs> That's interesting. Okay, so uh, as as an event professional, how can I be more aware of this, and how can I make a difference? Um, in, in the AV space, um, if you, uh, it's I mean, lights and moving to like clean energy is is going to be like your number one, um, your number one well, focus. We made, we made a huge initiative to move from conventional lighting to mostly LED, which can you know conserves. 80% of the power or something, but yeah. And your equipment will last longer, which means you're making more money. So that's, these are all good choices. What about for, for the, you know, the corporate event planner who works inside of a company who's working on a big event, what, what can they do? Uh, again, you know, everything from like energy to food, to transportation, like there's, there's so many things, even just like reducing, um, uh, reducing the number of people overall that are there, just really cut it down to like who matters most yeah. and thinking through like, what's your online content strategy to reach everybody else. Yeah. Um, things and, like and that. Choosing cities and sites where busing is not as necessary. I, that was a, a big one. Yeah. With, um, a couple of the events we worked on is choosing sites that don't require tons of busing to move people around. Yeah. And, 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 you know, really 
happily, um, happily, I created a sustainability pledge that extends beyond environmental. So um, for us, it's reduce, represent, and reinvest. So reduce, I think we talked a lot about um, just now, just in terms of like reducing waste to the environment. But represent um, it really stands for you know representing diverse voices, like people who are you know, in the margin, um, and bringing them to the table. And, and that's really important. That social justice issue actually creates a lot more jobs. It creates a lot more innovation uh, within our space. And then um, reinvesting in local economies. I mean, there's um, there was so much like waste in terms of like swag, and you're like buying swag from a distributor in Michigan who is getting their stuff like out of China, and it's going to your event in Austin, right? Yeah. So, um, so for you know, for us, it's it's beyond environment. It's, it's also like looking at how do we give back to local economies. Um, and, and how do we actually make sure that everybody um, is included in the conversation that we're having? And I feel like